first thing I'm going to do is play one of our patient stories so that you get to experience one. The story starts with us on a family holiday, a really lovely holiday together. And just at that time, my wife was feeling a bit unwell. We managed to get back home. I did call the doctor when we got back and said, look, I am concerned about her. Later on in the evening, I heard her calling out. When I heard her voice, I knew something was wrong because it wasn't her normal voice. And she was having difficulty speaking and also difficulty moving her arms and legs. I called 999. The ambulance then got to the hospital. Then Siobhan was whisked away into the resuscitation room. And at some point, someone said, maybe you'd like to go into the family room. It had neon lights and it had pictures of poppies on the wall, which are symbolic for me of death. So I didn't like that. But anyway, we were, were sitting there and then the sister came out and said, look, I'm sorry you've had to wait, but we've been doing everything we can for your wife. And I'm sorry to say she's really not doing very well. At that point, I was thinking, oh dear, that probably means she's going to be in the ITU for a few days. And we just waited and waited before the consultant and the sister came both together and said, I'm sorry, but she's gone. It was a terrible shock. We literally, a few days before, we'd been happily on holiday. Then I thought she just had a flu bug or something. And now they were telling me she was dead. They were very kind, but it still left me wondering, would there have been a time when we could have sat with her just for five or ten minutes? I just feel that by the time they brought her body into the room adjacent to the family room, her body was already starting to get cold. I was relieved that she still had some warmth in her face. I could just kiss her goodbye, but it just felt a little bit like, have we medicalised death to the point where families can be left out when really they could still be included? The other thing that was distressing was at one point I thought I'd heard her calling out when she was still in the resuscitation room. That made me feel even more, you know, I just would have liked to have had that little bit of time with her just to reassure her. So, what is a digital story? It's an edited voice recording put together with photos and drawings. And the three principles, it's always first person. It's always short so that everybody's got time to listen to them or they're easy to put into meetings as presentations. And the teller remains the director of their story. They're in charge. It's a very direct way of them communicating. And why do we do them? Uh, I've summarised this in three reasons. We do it firstly for the people themselves to process what they're going through, and that can be very powerful. We do it secondly for sharing best practice and for service promotion. And this is my big passion. We do it for advocacy, for service improvement, where um, some of them go into training, some of them go into business cases, um, some of them go direct to the teams that have been involved, some of them go to the board of directors, wherever they're needed to help improve services. We found all sorts of benefits from them. Uh, we presented incidents escalating to formal complaints and ending up in court because being heard and telling your story brings resolution and closure for the people involved. They feel like they're really contributing to service improvement and that their pain has got some meaning. We've improved services such as perinatal mental health, family witness resuscitation in the story you've just heard, um, incident reporting, end of life care, all sorts of areas which have been changed and transformed because we have listened to our patients through the digital story process.
and we shared best practice in areas such as pressure ulcer prevention, dementia care and responding to never events. We had brilliant senior support. Um, this is Cathy Dowling, who's a lead for patient experience uh, in our health board. She says we're truly committed to using patient experience to improve our services. And these real stories touch the hearts and minds of our staff and actually change practice. And Cathy goes on to say um, when uh, in a recording I, uh, she's made for me, um, she says it's much better than rather than managers coming into a situation to say, you know, the patient feet has fed back that this wasn't satisfactory. It's much better to be able to just play the patient's voice because it creates empathy with the staff rather than management coming in and as an official sort of come down on people. So where are we now? Well, um, stories start most of our health board meetings, right from ward meetings to quality improvement meetings, to nursing and midwifery boards, to the board, board of directors meeting. And Marcia, who's here with me, um, is responsible for that and um, sending those out to people. And uh, also Dalton is here, who's our patient experience media apprentice and he's responsible for our SharePoint site. And we now have a library of over 200 stories on that site. Uh, we have 12 active trained story facilitators across the health board who record stories on frontline. Um, we have a patient story forum for those story facilitators where we keep learning and keep quality improvement going. Uh, we have regular showcase events so that people who are running um, meetings can come and check in on what the latest stories are that have been made. Our training has been accredited by the University of South Wales and we are sharing that training more widely. Um, I, we're now running training via the HOPE network in England through the Heads of Patient Experience Network. We're, and uh, we're talking to people in America about developing things there too. And for the future, we're building on planning some more in-depth research into the impact that is being created by the stories. So I just want to finish by saying digital storytelling is deep listening and it leads to service improvement. So thank you.